XOXO, Gothic Girl. <laughs> Pose. <laughs> Audra at Home is filmed in front of a live Pitbull audience. Good morrow and merry meet. My name is Audra and you are in for a treat. All right, so as continuing my analysis, my opinion, I guess, and in looking into the declining views in beauty YouTube, I wanted to talk about this topic next. Now, one of the reasons I'm so interested in this is not just because I am a creator, but also as a subscriber, right? I am curious why the views are down uh, as well, like as a creator, but I'm also curious as a subscriber in the sense of why am I also not as interested in beauty content as I once was? I still love makeup. I obviously still love to play with it, but what's changed? And I'm just taking my observations and looking at various things and kind of putting videos together, talking about the issues that I think are afflicting the community and changing the viewership uh, as we see it, as we know it right now. And maybe at some point I'll get to like the end of this. But for now, today, we're gonna talk about the rise of TikTok. Wait, just wait a minute. We're going to talk about the rise of TikTok. Yes, this is my crown, cause I am queen of this dog. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who don't know what TikTok is, it is Vine, basically. And if you don't know what Vine is, essentially TikTok is where you can create 15, 30 second, 60 second, or three minute videos or anywhere in between of any kind of content that you wanna talk about. And they're very quick hits and it's a good time. So TikTok really came to prominence in 2020 because we were all home, right? The I think it was there previously and I had seen it and heard of it, but I hadn't, my, like many adults, <laughs> hadn't messed with it. It was a kid's app. That was the whole thing about TikTok. And then the pandemic showed up. And when that happened, people were either at home working or not working at all, trying to find another job, whatever it was. And they got on to TikTok at first as viewers like myself, and then eventually starting to create content. I think I the first thing that I ever put on TikTok was probably in 2019, but I'm not positive. I feel like it was because I think I was still working at that point in time. Anyways, neither here nor there. So the thing about TikTok that is fantabulous is that it's, like I said, very quick hits. You can really just watch a lot of stuff in a short period of time and enjoy yourself. And I do think that it was very, very helpful for beauty content creators that had been creating in other spaces, for instance, Instagram and on Twitter. But both Twitter and Instagram became, in my opinion, very difficult to grow on at some point. I know we've been complaining at least, I feel like since 2016, about the changes in Instagram's algorithm and how they present content to you. So as a beauty content creator, especially if you were doing mostly stills or a few of these, if, if you were doing that, <laughs> when those changes took effect and by the changes, what I mean is at one point in time, you could go to Instagram and your timeline would be in chronological order from people you follow. The changes that took place don't do that. And not only does it not also often show you everybody that you follow, it shows you people you didn't even know you were following, which I suspect that those are people who bought followers, but we'll move on. Uh, but it, you'll end up following people that you didn't want to. And on top of that, if you're following any large creator, it feels like all you see is their content. And so you either have to mute them, which you don't want to do because you like them or unfollow them. Again, you don't want to do it because you like them just to be able to see everyone else in your timeline, or you have to scroll for a really, really long time. <laughs> And those changes really hurt a lot of beauty creators who at one point in time were able to get sponsorships or PR, things that helped them to continue to create the content. Enter TikTok. 
on TikTok, these beauty creators were not only able to showcase their immaculate and amazing skills, but they were also able to do it with audiences that caught on very quickly that they were awesome, gain a huge following really, really fast, get a lot of engagement and get these videos shared all over different social media platforms. TikTok is shared literally everywhere. It's shared on Facebook, it's shared on Twitter, it is shared on Instagram, it's shared on YouTube. TikTok is everywhere. And I think as more creators who were initially, you know, like I said, on Instagram and Twitter, were able to gain large followings, it changed the way that people watched beauty content or consumed beauty content, right? Like I can't compete on YouTube because realistically speaking, I have to make my video a specific period of time. Like it has to be a specific length in order for me to get ads. And I am relying on AdSense to help make up for the things that I purchase for this channel, not just the makeup, but also, but to make up for all of the equipment that I need and all of the, those kinds of things. It makes it significantly easier when, you know, you're having to look at YouTube and be like, okay, my video has to be this long. I have to put this many ads in it in order to, you know, reap benefits so that I can, you know, buy another ring light. I, I want another ring light, actually. I keep saying it and I'm like, yeah, I think I do want another ring light. For what? Let's, let's not get into it. Whereas on TikTok, you didn't have those restraints. First of all, a lot of people initially were just creating content for free and uh, many still are, but they're gaining large followings and those large followings are opening the door for sponsorships that they previously either didn't have access to or had once had access to, but lost just due to changes in the algorithm on Instagram. And do beauty content creators start doing it for free? Yes. However, here is the difference. On YouTube, if you start at zero, you create some content. It's going to be a while for most, most people before they see or gain any traction from that one video, right? You can post an immaculate, gorgeous, stunning, creative look, and it can take so long before you see traction. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, it could literally be years. Like one day, somebody may come upon your video and let's say like a huge creator decides to recreate your look, and all of a sudden your video blows up. TikTok, you can start at zero at that that day, all right? Post your look, have thousands if not millions of views in a day, thousands of shares, and also gain a huge following very, very quickly. It doesn't take an enormous amount of work to get there. And, not, and by work, I'm not talking about the actual work you put in. I'm talking about how that algorithm works, right? Because there aren't ads on TikTok, there are, but not like they are on YouTube. Because there's not ads like on TikTok, or excuse me, because there's not ads like on YouTube, you're able to sit there, watch this content, enjoy it, and then everybody can quick hit it and be like, oh my God, did you see this? this is nuts, like go look at this. And everybody's sharing it and moving it around. Whereas a YouTube video, the algorithm isn't even pushing your video because you don't have the followers. So zero sum on both definitely goes to TikTok. TikTok takes your zero sum and makes it immaculate, huge, big. And what you do with that following after that point is completely up to you. But on YouTube, you just do not have that flexibility just due to the way that the algorithm works. Speaking of the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm is just not, it is, it, the TikTok algorithm is far superior to the YouTube algorithm. Now I know people will say um, varying, varying things as to why the YouTube algorithm won't change. I think it's money, 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 money. I think it's money, right? The bigger a creator is, the more that YouTube wants to push that content to you, regardless of whether or not you're interested in that creator. And I think when it comes to beauty content, that is very, very harmful for YouTube. If you keep pushing a huge creator on me that I don't want to watch, right? I don't enjoy their content. I don't like them. And I keep saying I'm not interested and I'm really interested in watching smaller creators, but because they're too small for the algorithm to push them, 
I'm upset and I'm annoyed and I'm irritated. I'm tired of having to say I'm not interested. I'm tired of having to try to rely on my subscription feed that isn't actually working the way that I want it to. And I'm tired of having to like have other creators tell me about this other creator so that I can go find them and follow them. On TikTok, it is that algorithm, baby, it knows you, okay? By you hearting something, it's like, oh, you like this? We'll give you. You want more? <laughs> Ow. So on TikTok, that algorithm moves in such a way that if you are interested in uh, somebody's beauty content, like let's say that they do a lot of looks like this, right? And you're like, I freaking love indie makeup. I love, you know, indie shadows. I like duochromes and multi-chromes and shifty, shiny, all that goodness, right? You find a creator that does that, you like it, you comment, you scroll up. The next thing is somebody doing something similar, same kind of shifty eye. You're like, yes, this is what I love. And by you liking that, you end up being able to see a lot of content that you're truly enjoying and that you wanted to see. And simply by like not hearting something and not interacting with that content, you just don't see it again. Or you can say, I don't want to see content like this. And TikTok really listens to you for the most part and says, okay, we won't show that to you unless you interact with it, in which case we're gonna show it to you, so sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> with YouTube, it just doesn't move like that. And I think with the rise of TikTok and being able to consistently see not only the creators you wanna see, but the kind of makeup and tutorials that you wanna see, it has led to a decline in viewership for beauty YouTube. Because if I can't control what I wanna see, then I just don't wanna be there after a while. Like I, as a subscriber, I'm like, I'm kinda tired of just trying to see like this thing and I cannot see it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move over here and slide over to TikTok, which is gonna show me exactly what I want to see. I don't have to work too hard for this. It's very, very easy for me to like make that algorithm show me what I want, right? And also I said tutorials. This is a huge, huge thing that I think definitely has contributed to lower viewership on YouTube. So with beauty YouTube, we've all seen it. We've all seen it. The people are like, I just want to see tutorials. Can you show us tutorials? And then we all have to go as creators. Those don't really give views. They do, right, for the people who want it. So if you have 3,000 subscribers and 500 of them really want to see tutorials, all 500 of them are going to watch your tutorial video because they asked for it, they wanted it, they're going to watch it. Now, out of your other 2,500, maybe a couple hundred more of them will watch it. Maybe another 500 just super loyal people are going to watch it. Even though they don't like tutorials, they're going to put it on in the background. The other 2,000 may not care at all. They just, they're like, I don't care for a tutorial that I don't want to watch it, right? And they're going to move on about their lives. So what you get is a thousand views, 500 of the people who asked, and then 500 loyal subscribers are like, I'm going to watch whatever you put out. That sucks. You put all this work into doing the tutorial. And especially when you're monetized, when you put all that work and effort setting up the camera, the shots, all of this good stuff for it to not pay off, you're like, I'm not going to do this anymore. It doesn't help me. And as much as people want to see tutorials, depending on your create, your size, depends on who's going to watch it. Right? So in that example, I use 3000. So if you don't have a really high viewership, it just stops being worth it. And even if you read a higher viewership, you've seen many say the same thing. It's just not worth it. If I have 50,000 subscribers and only 10 of them, 10,000 of them are going to watch a tutorial, I cannot continue to allow this to be on my channel because it brings down my channel and the algorithm. TikTok, however, are where tutorials thrive. And they thrive there because first and foremost, 60 seconds, I cannot beat 60 seconds. I cannot beat a 60 second tutorial. And it's literally like boop, 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 boop. And here's the reality. If everybody is just doing a 60 second tutorial, I can see 10 tutorials in 10 minutes. Oh, oh darn, that's
That's awesome. You cannot do that on YouTube. TikTok has a way of being able to show you how to do something fairly quickly and easily, especially by doing like fun little story times in that 60 second time frame. Even though there's people who are doing it three minutes, three minutes is more of a recent development. But you could see so many tutorials on like if you have hooded eyelids how to apply uh false lashes for hooded lids and you could see those this fast this fast to be able to see them that quickly and walk away with that knowledge and not only walk away with that knowledge and see it that quickly but be able to just kind of play it on repeat as you try to figure it out and like look and you're like oh wait and then hit pause and then be like okay okay that's invaluable and YouTube cannot beat that. They cannot, like as a beauty creator, I cannot beat a 60 second tutorial. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do that. Not only can I not beat the 60 second tutorial, I can't beat the fact that on TikTok, they can use copyrighted music. I talk better than you, I hustle better, I can get a dollar quicker than you. We can't do that on YouTube. We, we can't do that. There was a time when you could, but the DMCA, the DCMA, I always mix up the letters because um, that is how my brain works. But the, the copyright gods, and of course it's gonna be gods and not a goddess because a goddess wouldn't do something so hateful. But the copyright gods do not allow creators on YouTube, no matter their size, to use copyrighted music. So if I am a subscriber, which I am, if I have to choose between watching a YouTube tutorial that is 15 minutes long with that um, YouTube music in the background or whatever copyright free music, even if it's good, even if it's good music, I pay for a service to have good music, but even if it's good, and then I have to choose between watching that and watching a 60 second tutorial to Megan the Stallion's thought shit. Babes, I'm going to thought shit. Like that's where I'm going. I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna watch someone kind of aggressively be like, hands on my knees, you know? You know? I'm gonna watch somebody do that. I'm gonna watch somebody have attitude, fun faces, doing this, be like, ow, bitch, and like getting themselves together, turning their head, being like, bam, look what's happened. Oop, I look better now. Like that is visually, exciting and it's auditorily fantastic. Like I get all the things I want. I get to see a tutorial. I get to see it be very exciting and fun. And I get to listen to some of my favorite songs or current songs, which you just can't do on YouTube. I mean, you can, but like they're gonna copyright strike you. And then you're also gonna have to like do that thing where you're like, I agree to fucking like you, whatever it is, you're just gonna have to do that. But there is a level to which beauty YouTube, beauty content creators on YouTube cannot beat that on TikTok. There are certain things where we're going to, you know, um, excel, but there are just so many other realms where on TikTok, you don't have to have this whole intro, you don't have to have intro music and intro graphic and exit, you don't have to have any of that. You just pop on, you're doing your thing. And that's not to say that they're not working hard because I know that they are, because when I'm trying to create like reels for Instagram while also simultaneously filming, that is a whole, whole thing. It's not easy work, but the thing is, one, they make it look effortless and two, with all of those advantages, it's very difficult to compete with that. Like, let us be real about what's happening here. It is difficult to compete with people who are able to throw on like the best music. And Reels is also another part of that because Reels is trying to be TikTok, obviously. But anytime you're able to do um, makeup looks or showcase or show off your makeup look with current or popular music of any generation, you have legs up on what we can do on YouTube. I cannot throw on Slipknot and do like a metal get ready, you know? I can't do it. Like I would love to, that would have been one of my favorite things to do, but you can't because the copyright gods, once again, will come down from on high and just strike you in the face. And it's, you can't do anything about that. You're bruised, you're battered, you're beaten, and you've had a bad day. Cause you had a bad day. <laughs> On top of that, being able to do tips and tricks, which is very quick to do again on TikTok, 
a very quick video, again, because there's not ads. The thing about TikTok is the ads show between the content and you can immediately skip it. As soon as you see it, it's like bite, 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 and you just keep going. And there's one, you watch something, you're like, cool. You watch something else, you watch something else, you watch something else, add buy. It's very easy to like skim and slide out of that. If, especially if on YouTube, for whatever reason, if you don't have YouTube premium, YouTube, <laughs> Ha doesn't give us control over what ads are in our content, right? All we know is we're placing ads in whatever our time step stamps are. I tend to try to place ads in natural breaks in my content if I can find them. Uh, I did learn that from Jamie French because I saw that she did that and I was like, I should do this too. So I do try to put natural, you know, ads in my natural breaks. I, however, do not have any control over the length or the content or whether or not it's skippable. There's a level to which I do, but truly I don't. Cause I can say that I want them to be skippable ads, but YouTube is YouTube. They own the platform and they can put a 10 minute non skippable ad in the middle of my video. And I have no recourse because it doesn't matter if I delete that particular ad that people have told me about, they can just move it to a different ad, a different ad space that I have available. Right. I have zero. I don't have that control. And I have once tried to like control the content of my ads. Oh my God. It's so miserable. It's so hard y'all. I can't even, I, I cannot even begin to tell you how fucking difficult it was. Like you have to like find the specific ad and copy the URL. It's too much. It's a hassle. So not having control over that also means that people who don't have premium can't just watch my content uninterrupted, right? They have to watch it with the ads. And so they can see it as like, there's a lot of ads in here. And you're like, I don't, it, what I put here is like one ad. I don't have any control over what that one ad drop is. I don't know if that's one ad. I don't know if it's three ads. I have no idea. When I pop that in there, I don't know what YouTube is going to do with it. And that's, uh, that is the truth. Most of us don't know. So like when people say, oh my gosh, there's a lot of ads, they don't realize like for a lot of us, we're thinking I'm putting an ad here. I'm putting an ad here. I'm putting an ad here. Right. But YouTube's like, yes. However, your content blew up and now we're putting two ads in this first one, three in this second one, and we're going to do one here. So there's, there's just nothing. We don't have any control over that. Whereas with TikTok, you don't have to see an ad at all during your tutorial. You literally get to like enjoy the tutorial, enjoy the tips and tricks. And again, it's very, very fast. You get to enjoy very quick beauty hacks and it's just such a nice, an easy way of seeing content that has been monetized on YouTube. And again, I think it should be monetized point blank and period. I think it should be monetized. However, the way that YouTube controls that monetization also controls how you, the viewer looks at it, right? If I didn't have YouTube premium, I don't think that I would be able to watch YouTube. I don't like for y'all who do this without premium, my crown off to you. Okay. Because I don't, know how you do that. I can't, I cannot deal with ads when I'm watching something very specific. Like there's something weird about YouTube. Like I can do it. And I think I can do it on like IMDB and Tubi. And the reason I can do it there is specifically because most of what I'm watching is stuff I've already seen before. And I'm usually having that on as ADHD background fog. So it doesn't bother me at all. But when I'm watching YouTube, I'm just like, and I think also because the, the ads are loud or they have nothing to do with what's happening. Who cares? The point is on TikTok, the ads aren't like that. It's just, it's ad free. And most importantly, the monetization just isn't there yet to where it is on YouTube. For TikTok, the monetization just isn't there. Again, not saying people aren't getting paid, but the monetization the in the way that the you that YouTube has like this iron fist on how monetization takes place and all of us creators have no idea how it works. It isn't there yet on TikTok. So the, you just watch all this stuff and it makes sense though, right? To keep these videos shorter. I am actually wondering how things are going to move as TikTok keeps incrementally increasing how long your content can be. And my thoughts, I have my tinfoil crown on is that at some point they're going to be an even bigger competition for YouTube than they are now. So who knows, especially with their badass algorithm. Do you know how many creators will just 
over there if they know that they can create content they want to create, have more control over the ads that drop into their content and have an algorithm that favors them, right? Instead of you having to rely on notifications, which is another problem with YouTube, instead of having to rely on notifications when your favorites drop videos, you just go in and look at your for you page. You just go in and look at your following page and you're like, boop, boop, boop caught up, good day, What this was fun, I enjoyed this, right? I will say that there are some, th some drawbacks to TikTok and one of those is that there seems to be allegedly, supposedly, maybe, perhaps, a lot of undisclosed sponsorships on TikTok and it just hasn't gotten to where, you know, it needs to be for all of that to truly be disclosed as we all saw with that KBD NAM foundation. Nobody liked that shit, it was hot garbage. Anyways, I also think that where YouTube uh, definitely excels is in in-depth reviews, right? I think it's harder to have a good in-depth review in 60 seconds or even three minutes. Not saying it can't be done, but I do think that being able to sit and especially unscripted like myself, my friend Tina, the fancy face, unscripted, be able to talk about a product in depth and at length is something that TikTok does fail at. And I do think that the that is a spot where beauty YouTube shines. I will also say this, I don't think that every single TikTok creator can move to YouTube. Because again, I think that this might be a phase, but who knows, it could be long-term. But there are a lot of TikTok creators who would not survive on YouTube. They just would not. Personality wise, they may not be as interesting as you thought they were. D'Amelio sisters, I'm looking at you. I know that you're little children, but we did not know you weren't interesting. So that could happen and has happened. We've seen it happen, right? But also there are plenty of people on YouTube who could not make it on TikTok doing beauty content. And I say that as somebody who does very little beauty content on my TikTok. My TikTok is more a space for me to talk about my neurodivergency, abusive relationships, and just anything that I wanna talk about period. It was also a great place for me to get more comfortable and confident doing more commentary because I got comfortable just talking about things that were on my mind that I didn't feel like I was able to do on beauty YouTube for a while. Um, I felt like a lot of times if I was talking, I had to be doing my makeup, not just because I was on beauty YouTube, but because it was a good way for me to kind of focus and gather my thoughts. And now I realize like, that is a good thing that I got from, from TikTok, being able to just kind of turn on the camera and chat about something, be like, this is why I'm annoyed by this and like be able to enjoy my life that way, right? So I do think that, I don't think that beauty YouTube is going away, but I do feel like the TikTok algorithm and how TikTok operates is definitely contributing to a decline in view viewership on beauty YouTube. I know that YouTube introduced shorts, but I'm gonna be honest, as a content creator, I'm gonna tell you, I don't like making them. I will put one that something that I've already put on TikTok on there, but even that I'm not really excited to do because it looks like unless you were a really big creator and you already have a huge following of people who are gonna watch every single one of your shorts, it's like an anchor to your channel and not the good kind. It just sinks it. Like it just whoosh, because if your channel if each one of your videos experiences, let's say between 800 and 1K views, if you do a YouTube short and it only gets 400, that I think is dropping you in the algorithm and it doesn't feel good. And it's something that I feel like a lot less creators are gonna be willing, especially smaller creators are gonna be willing to try knowing that it could bring your channel down and hurt you even further in the algorithm. So I think a lot of people would still just rather do that content over on TikTok than worry about it dragging down their already monetized channel on YouTube. So I think that we have a long way to come, go, excuse me, we have a long way to go. And I don't think that like TikTok is gonna ruin anything. And I don't think TikTok has ruined anything. I think that TikTok has elevated that game and made it more interesting and more fun in ways that we just can't do on Beauty YouTube. And that's fine. I think that it, you know, everything does evolve and Beauty YouTube should definitely evolve as well. Um, 
Yeah, in most of the spaces, I do not think that beauty YouTube can compete with beauty TikTok. It's just um, kind of an insurmountable, impossible hill. They are two completely different platforms and one has just a lot more freedom and ability to do everything that would be TikTok. And one is very rigid and has a lot of rules. And especially with the monetization and the ad aspect of it, it does make it very difficult because if you curse, if you are raunchy, and you are small, a small creator, it's very difficult to get pushed in the algorithm. Where TikTok has created an algorithm that wants you to stay watching and wants you to stay scrolling as long as you possibly can. And they do that by making sure that they're consistently showing you content that you want to see. You have licenses for all of this music. It's just a really good time. So I don't know, y'all let me know. Let's discuss in the comments below. What are your thoughts on TikTok uh, and how TikTok is taking over or taking viewership and viewership's moving over there? Do you think that that's true or do you think that I'm just like pulling things out of my ass? I'm just like, whoop, I just made this up. Or do you think that you still like beauty YouTube, but there's, you know, some of the stuff that I talked about today is maybe why you don't necessarily watch as well. Because I think for me, I watch a lot less beauty content just in part, yeah, because I want to see it quick. I want to see it fast. And it depends on the content. Like I like, I love to watch reviews, but I think I myself get kind of um, bored sometimes and it sucks. So it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. <laughs> If you could do me a quick flavor and give this video a big thumbs up so then that way the algorithm goddess can do what she does best, which is push me further down into the algorithm so that I can continue to do what? Whatever the fuck I want to. All right, as usual, huge shout out to my patrons and spooky bays, yeah. All right, thank you all so much for all of your support for without you, I would not be able to keep the bats in the belfry and the spiders firmly ensconced in their webs. To all of you who watch, like, share, and subscribe, I appreciate you as well. And as usual, it costs zero, zero dollars to be kind. Don't get stepped on, just be kind kind because it's so good for your soul you know and if you don't take care of your soul i'm going to add you to the infinite list of souls that i already have so you know until next time xoxo <laughs> got the <it>, girl <laughs> all of the the stuff that i need all of the equipment that's the word i'm looking for i felt like i just spit i should also turn on the freaking freaking light but there is a level to which you feel like you are, in fact, I'm just making sure. Okay, I, okay. Cause you've had a bad day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to just give a little, a little bit more from, from just the actual sunlight. Oh, I did good on this one. I hope it didn't fucking not record sound. Cause. I will shoot myself in the face. It's, I'm so upset. <laughs>